продолжаем наши цикл лекций, которые мы ведем в Спасибо, что все пришли. Я думаю, что мы очень получится просто ваше удовольствие. Мы представим нашего первого лектора Валентина Григорьевича Он вкусный директор медиафестиваля, очень известный в мире, проходит ежегодно. Сотрудничает с институцией, такими как Макс и музей, если вы знаете. И он медиа-директор, координатор фонда, фонда Digital. Подаешь, да. Пожалуйста, вот приветствую. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to speak with this if you have a translation. So, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, as Amanda said, I'm Valentino Petrigala, the artistic director of the Media Art Festival in Rome and uh, research and contemporary art creator. And, um, we are going to, to our, I'm going to talk about this, uh, yeah, we will be briefly, don't worry, I'm not, I won't be long, about media art living out of the environment with Dan and his study, but actually it's going to be uh, mostly on the social impact of media art. Because we, we always speak about, talk about, you know, media art, relationship between art and technology, and we always, for sure, focus on the, um, the influence that media art had in culture, in uh, contemporary art or, or in cinema, for instance, in other relations. But we don't know much. We haven't actually uh, yet investigated the importance that this field has for uh, innovation and society more in general. Because when an artist uses technologies, he it doesn't, it doesn't use only a simple tool, but at the same time, to give a new interpretation of the medium itself. A new interpretation of, of what it could be and what potentialities the medium has. And because an artist that uses technology doesn't use a simple, tool, but it used complex tool like this, for instance, you know, these are complex tools, these are media, around which there is a war made by engineering, companies, societies, and entrepreneurs, and the artists ran into this war, making a new interpretation, you know, opening a new interpretation of this point of view. So, what I would like to do is to show you a brief on the archaeology, the history of the mass, giving some example of this new interpretation from the point of view of innovation, not only from the point of view of contemporary art, and, of course, at the end, a sort of case study, which is, for sure, the festival the Media Art Festival in Rome, because the aim of the festival is exactly that. It's uh, an attempt to bring together different worlds, like the contemporary art world, cinema, the, the, the sound world, and the innovation, and the world of technology. But let's see how. So, first of all, it's important to understand what Media Art is. Because uh, we use many terms, so actually we uh, use many terms to define this complex um, word. You know, for the cinema we have, we have one word, two or three word maximum, but actually when we say cinema we know suddenly what is cinema. With media art we have terms like digital art, interactive art, new media art, but actually I choose media art because in my opinion today it's the more complex and uh, the best term to define this world. Because digital art is uh, very 90s in my opinion and uh, it is a term that divides what is art 
and what it is not hard based on technology. No? This is digital, this is not digital. New media art actually is very useful for, in, for English because um, you know that media in English is everywhere. Also, the, the painter is on media. Uh, but actually, if we look deeper, we see that there is any new in the practice of art. The artist put into question the idea of a linear evolution of cinema and media. Because they don't care if this medium is new or old, they mix all of it, creating an horizontal point of view of media, not a linear point of view of media as the market does. And this is, a, this is why I prefer media, which is a complex term, uh, it's not very precise, but can give us an interpretation of what I want to talk about. Then I choose this sentence by Oliver Grau, who is a, a scholar, that talks about media as the art form that uses the technology that fundamentally change our society. First thing, something that is changing our society and plays an important role in the reflection of our time. So, media use that technology, giving a new reflection of our time, giving some tools to see our time. For more than 50 years, media art has combined the latest technologies with the big question of our time. Artists critical address the vision of life, science, and projection on artificial life. Utopias of neuroscience, robotic and cyber, so it seems something very serious, no? Because uh, <laughs> we are talking about utopias, utopias of neuroscience, artificial life, robotic, cyber, so something very connected to the human being and to the future of the human being. Reflect and researches the media and image revolution, it takes up the subject of the processes of globalization and growing worldwide survey. So it seems that media give us is a sort of key to investigate our era and to go deep into the big question of our time that we are living together, you know? The idea our connection with technologies, our idea of a, a new humanities, you know, as we are a lot of the Theresian scholars are, have been saying and what were serving and so something very serious, let's say. But actually, uh, if uh, this is, you know, the main concept, we have to understand very well what we are talking about. Because music art is a complex system. And actually, when I sometimes speak about my festival, you know, trying to find foundings, and you talk to the people that doesn't know, that don't know anything about art and technology and everything. They always um, say you, um, oh, are you dealing with something very new? This is new. Yeah, this is new, but actually this is not new at all. That's the problem. There haven't been a real tradition around this thing. Let's do a little joke. If I ask you what come up um, in your mind when I say the word cinema. It's quite easy. You have some, you know, the first images of first terms. Movies? Sorry? Screen. Ah, okay. Screen, of course. Film? Film? Sorry? Sorry? Train. Train. Yeah, exactly. Uh, cinematographic sale light. as well, light. right? Light, cinematographic sale, I think, because we still, the first image is the sale, but actually we watch movie in our apartment. So, something your imagination, your imagery, is connected with something very clear. When I ask you what has come up in your mind when I say the terms video art, for instance, you know? Sorry? YouTube. Uh, YouTube? But YouTube is a uh, so social media. Not, not at all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
monitor. So you are becoming more silent because maybe I can help you reply you. The first thing that comes up is uh, something strange on a monitor, sometimes seen in some museum, right? Okay. And what does come up in your mind when I say the terms media? Can I reply first? <laughs> Absolutely nothing, right? Okay, this is exactly the process around which a cultural environment grows. Around which this is this little stupid joke is a trigger of a big and huge process made by institutions, preservation plans, museums. So, investment on creating new institutions, university courses, festivals, experts. So, this has happened with terms like cinema, as we know, but it doesn't mean already happen with terms like media. That's the difficult thing when you're in the future, but I really don't know for you, you want to found a festival and uh, you will go to find uh, funding and if you say to the politician or whatever, you say I want to do a film festival, they already know, you have not to say anything more but if you say I want to do a media festival, what? At the end they're gonna tell you, ah, so you're going to do the strange projection on the big facade, cool! They say, okay, if you give me money, yes, we are going to do that, you know? So, this stupid joke, it's not so stupid at all. Because it's something very deep in the way in which a society works. And this is why it's not a new at all. There is a big tradition and the cultural environment is made by this tradition. If we find the tradition of all of these and we understand the importance of these, we are going to understand very well and we can make through a culture around this thing. So, let's go to see some little example, you know, jumping into history in, in uh, let's say, if we want to be cool, archaeological point of view. But it's a good division between archaeology and history. For instance, uh, this is uh, a not very well known artwork, let's say. Did you know it? No. Oh. This is the Michael Neymar. Michael Neymar was a filmmaker and artist in the 70s. He started to work with uh, MIT labs. So, he started to work uh, with engineering, with a team of technicians, experts, you know. So, in uh, at MIT, MIT was very important at that time as well. And he had an idea. Why don't we create an interactive map of a city? Why don't we create a uh, new idea of orientation, of orienting into the city? Because what he wanted to do, what he wanted to do is create and give to the spectator, to the audience, a new way to perceive and to feel and live the city. And then, he, with the technology of that time, not stop motion, he created with a theme the Aspen movie, an interactive map of Aspen. You can see people sat down here, and uh, they could, could move, was able to move into, you know, stop, left, right. It was an, an artistic insight to give another way to live. Uh, the orientation to give a new experience which is exactly what today we do every day this sort of new experience is, is inside us today it's completely normal for us to orient ourselves with a map it wasn't so banal at that time it wasn't so simple because at that time you had some map Drone, you know, and so an artistic insight gave a new way to interpret it artistically the city, and at the same time he created something useful for the society, something new, 
for this society. Something that afterwards it has been used and it is part of our society. And uh, the interesting thing is that this is very important in my opinion, but actually the history of let's say media art at that time uh, is based mostly on video art. Andrew Pike, Basulkas, you know, for sure they were very important. But uh, this experience is not so famous. And actually it's because uh, there are still a lot of prejudice about artists working with engineering. And it was an MIT product. So it's an ethical product. It's a, it's a real ethical product. But actually, this is uh, the Jeffrey Show, the Gibbon City. And uh, this is a bit older, and uh, this gives a little more, a little deep interpretation of uh, the city. Because the former one was interesting, the Michael Neymar, so it was very interesting because, um, because the parallel with the, with the Google Street View. But actually, uh, in this case, uh, Jeff Fritz Show created these uh, bikes and where you can get into a city made by wars. The topography of the city, the topography of the city was made exactly respect, exactly the topography of the city where the installation was installed. If it was installed in uh, Karlsruhe, for instance, the words, the topography, the words were put exactly revealing the street of Karlsruhe. And you can go into the city and read every time differently the city. You can give new interpretation because you can mix the words differently. <laughs> I'm also talking about this example because uh, afterwards you will have an incredible example of Anthony Abad, Blind Wiki. We change everything, we will change everything in our life. You will see, no? Well, I <laughs> So, and, uh, and it has been made in Manhattan, Amsterdam, and Karlsruhe. And the idea is always the same, you know, give a new experience to the audience, a new perception. Sorry. Are you comfortable there? <laughs> Maybe you can see there. Ah, here. That's mine. No, please, because I, I suffer for you this. And, uh, but. Uh, But, um, and uh, there are some places if you want. Okay. But actually, it's not something uh, Oliver Graham said, said uh, in the, fifth, the like, latest 50 years. But actually, media art is something deeper. We can trace back the archaeology even before, in my opinion, even at the end of the 800th century. But uh, this is a uh, more. Uh, it's a long story. Actually, we don't have enough time. But actually, we can arrive at the Thomas Wilfred Clavius. Who ever heard the Thomas Wilfred Clavius? Nobody. This is quite interesting as well because uh, what we see here, we see. Uh, Kind of, you know, the, uh, the other scene. No, right? We have here projection, like in the cinema. You know, it reminds us the cinema scene, as we said. But actually, at the same time, we have here a person playing a piano. But if we look better, we see that. The piano is exactly. <laughs> Please. Oh, 
that's uh, the clavillon, sir. He didn't like the, the, the clavillon. But actually, it, the piano is exactly in the same direction of the spring. So, what is the clavillon? You know, of course, it's written there, so it's easy for you. But actually, was an idea of this inventor. It was an artist. It was a creative guy, as which works with artists, which had some insight that uh, it was a, a sort of a mix of engineering and, uh, and an artist, you know? And uh, he created these mechanics, things, that can project image in real time with music. No? You understand? Meanwhile, we play and we listen the music, projection appears. So, for the first time, it's not a recorder image that appears on the screen, like cinema, see? But it's a real time performance. And this is for Impos Cavalux, which is the main instrument to create Lumia. For Clavillux, for Thomas Wilfred, Lumia was the art of light, which is for him the most important thing. It's not electronics, it's not digital, there is a mechanic. Uh, mechanic creating and he did a lot of tour around Europe, USA, he was a European but he lived in, in, in USA and uh, doing performance all the time. And then somehow I give a, an experience to the spectator. They, they didn't know at that time. Which is, if you want to see, the, we know very well this in art and in entertainment, like that for instance, this is a concert. We have digital technology, but of course we know also in the UJ practice, in a lot of artists, <coughs> who does uh, real-time image and, and uh, sound. Now, you can see how the present is complex. Because we are now, we are not talking about the past in this moment, we are talking about now, this moment, here, us. Our major, we are reinterpreting the past through the present, and this help us to understand also, of course, the future. But the, the interesting thing is that the Wilfred imagination uh, didn't stop that there. But sorry, I don't want to. No, no. Can you put me a bit? Okay. Thank you. But uh, later, in the 30s, because at that time, of course, the idea of experience, you know, were to share something in common. You have to imagine that the first uh, experiment on television wasn't in the 30s, but wasn't in, at, at the end of the, at the second half of the 800th century, exactly the same times when the first experiment of cinema, but the public sphere at that time wasn't so, wasn't made by a group of people moving, you know? Here, in the 30s, where, where the personal devices rise, he created the clavillus, homemade clavillus. For him, for him, before, you know, after working, after well, before going to, to, to sleep, you can create your own music, you know? This is a keyboard. <laughs> and this is Thomas Wilfred baby, maybe. When the battery, you know, just finished, he created this incredible idea. He's like it. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know how to uh, okay, so if it's going to if it's going to shut down, 
um, it will be a Thomas Wilfred call. But actually, so, uh, through a keyboard, you can create your music in your house, you know, which is exactly what we know today. Very well. Again, artist, an artist, anticipate through art something, a new experience, a new idea of um, make experience of media. Which is, um, <laughs> now we are jumping to nowadays more or less, this is the end of the 19th, you know Toichi Iwo? No. Have you ever heard it? No. Oh. He is a sound artist, and now, since we are living in another era, sound artists who work with uh, big companies for Yamaha, Nintendo, and together with Yamaha, uh, he created, he made this Tenorio, which is a sort of pub, sorry, pub, <laughs> it could be interesting if it would have been yeah, a pub, right? Yeah, yeah. And uh, this is a sort of uh, path to create music, homemade music again, which is exactly the launch path today. But uh, he made this for himself, for his practice, art, artist practice, you know. This is why he did a lot of performance with this at MoMA, at Tate, at Dazza, at Kronika, everywhere. But Yamaha, he, at the same time he made something that uh, was, uh, could be used for the market. This is why Yamaha put on the market this. They sold this object, made by the artist. Again, this is a strange relation. It's an artist that anticipated and looked forward. Something that, we, that uh, didn't exist before, but it was also something that it could be used for artist practice. And the important thing, we don't have time to analyze that, but the important thing is that all of these have also ethical issues to relation with companies, etc. And uh, um, so this is the Tenorion. And as I said, he did a lot of performance, you can look it up if you want on uh, YouTube. We can jump also, again, forward. Maybe, maybe to forward, I don't know. Uh, to nowadays, this is a quite known guy, probably you have heard him, about him. And this is uh, considered the first recognized cyborg by a government the Spanish government, because it was uh, it was Spanish. Sorry, he is Spanish, and and this is the first time that a government recognized a man as a cyborg. He had a blind uh, 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 problems, a blind. Uh, uh, I can't remember now the, the words. Daltonia. When you don't recognize the color. No, it's a... Uh, Daltonics, okay. So, here it is um, Daltonics, and uh, he, he implanted um, a, this antenna into his uh, skulls here. And this antenna changed the color of the environment in sound. Actually, and uh, he is an artist. Before to do that, he was an artist. And he spoke with some engineer and he said, I have this idea, what we can do together? And they created this. I must say that he started to do many performances with this. I must say that, if I may say, performances of Neil Arduson are not very interesting at all. <laughs> <laughs> No, the performance on Elas is on a very common. You can see this antenna changing sound and uh, an image, as you can see in DJ and Thomas Wilfred. But the real actor is him. He is the actor. Somehow. He is the one who 
change himself in another thing, pushing the concept of humanity forward. Probably nobody will put this antenna, he is going to be the only one. He probably will have a lot of problems physically, you know, because we don't know any plant technology. It's easy to say cyborg, but let's see what's happening if you do that. But actually, it makes us um, uh, understand. It makes it, it, this um, as a uh, give us some question. I don't know if I'm clear. We we can start to think thanks to that about the human being, about what we are today. And this all, all of this, I would have put on that, of course, blind wiggy, but uh, since uh, Anton is going to talk just after me, I think that he, he wouldn't uh, appreciate if I anticipate something, so I don't say nothing. I what, no problem. <laughs> Are you sure? So it's the worst application and app for ever. No, I'm joking. Mm. So something, but this is okay. Something change in our conceivement of what is the relationship between art and technologies. Uh, this one is what I is something that I wrote just as a note. You know that uh, what we said that in this way that the practice of art is throwing into question that we have a linear evolution of cinema and media and cinema as well to say audiovisual but and without prejudicial interest in the difference between new and old media, artists will mix the images, sound, and process of different media, renewing the concept of evolution, market, you know, give us, this is, uh, this mobile, this mobile, mobile is gonna be old very fast, you know? That's the way in which the market process, but actually, you know, artists give, uh, see uh, the media differently. They don't care about new old media, you know, they can use also old media and make that new somehow. And uh, this is a sentence about, this is one of a scholar, um, the most important scholar about the concept of creativity. He has a very not pronounceable name, but if you want to get trying, it's going to be like Csikszentmihalyi or something like that. And um, in this way, the artists, uh, you know, like, Continu con con continuously make dynamic the media environment, giving a new idea of the environment. So now we are going to see um, some example. Ah, okay, there is also this one. If you want to see, uh, this is a quite interesting sentence by Sean Kubit and Paul Thomas uh, <coughs> about the. Uh, how artists can help us to understand media, you know? If we say television today, we still think, we still think of something unity, you know, made by, uh, made something, the television for us, like cinema, as we said, but actually television is made like this uh, mobile, is made by many different technology and tradition itself, you know? This mobile, for instance, uh, is uh, made by the tradition of cinema, because we can do videos, we can do photograph, but that also the tradition of uh, uh, telephone, because of course with telephone messages, etc. And then if we look at the media like that, we can see a very complex uh, set of uh, every single media is a complex media and giving a new interpretation of media itself. So just uh, I'm almost finished. Just want to show you. Um, how we process, this is the festival, it's going to be the 17th and the 19th. Now, you have to do some picture of me talking there. Oh, yes. yes. No, because I have to justify that I'm here talking about the festival, not because I'm a big, I have a big ego. And um, uh, this is the, um, the, the middle festival, 17th and uh, 19th May. And uh, we work, we, we are trying to work like that, you know. It's a contemporary art, it's made, festival is made, uh, the, the, the venue is, uh, the principal venue is the Maxi Museum, which is a <coughs> contemporary art work museum. And there are many different other venues, but the, the exhibition will be 
it's mostly in the Maxi Museum. And um, we do a lot of projects also before artist presidency. We, we work with institutions, cultural institutions, museums, scholars, blah, blah, blah. But we also work with companies. How, for instance, you know, trying to this this match that you know the result today the the, the big companies create uh, they, they they produce every time the new glasses you know glasses glasses you know immersive augmented reality but at the end they don't know what to do with that glasses that's the thing you know they don't know absolutely they don't have content at the end they don't know really what to do with uh, um, uh, Amazon, Oreo, Hololens, Microsoft, uh, the Oculus Rift. Uh, by etc. So the idea is also to say to that that probably they can connect with artists all of this in this way creating a new market in this way creating also for artists a give to the artist tools expensive tools that they could be used as a potential um, uh, potentiality for credibility. All of this is not it. Uh, the important thing is that. Uh, it's not uh, the companies that uh, free, uh, that flee the practice of artists. That's the first thing and the most important thing. So, this open ethical problem, but this is also could be very stimulating for the future. To finish, we're going to see a little video uh, of the festival where you can see it does video made by Rai News. Uh, Rai is a principal Italian TV service and of the last edition and uh, it's gonna be in Italian but it doesn't matter because uh, it's not important the, the what the, what we say because uh, uh, you know we say like me you know we, we say a lot of stupid things so the important thing is that uh, um, uh, imaging and to see and to understand uh, also what is uh, the festival is let me see if uh, this is the right video this is uh, me very very tired so you see sound art video art you know mix of different ways to deal with technology we have a project made a project made during the year with the physics department of la sapienza or the uh, artist residency, Epson, and also all media like like uh, the two things that we have seen, they come from the end of 800th century. And this is uh, Yanis Kranidiotis. This is Joseph de Lapp, that uh, he made Dog Candy. He's an American artist. And uh, he did the uh, Gandhi's March uh, in Second Life. Mm -hmm. Every day in March and second life. And we try also to make to meet to match with the contemporary art world because today it's not important to create new borders because we know that today uh, what is media digital blah 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 but <laughs> the important thing is today in my opinion the connection with the contemporary art world as well because uh, every artist today use technologies in every biennale in every festival so it's not only the important thing is also connect the two worlds that uh, they always been separated and this is why in the center you probably saw a big uh, projection of Sigali Landau who is a uh, contemporary art artist that sculpture as well but and uh, that this video this is a very beautiful video of Sigali Landau And uh, this is the end of the video. And uh, on this note, I think that I'm going to say to you, thank you very much. And uh, I don't know, I hope that uh, in the future you will find uh, not a media art festival. Thank you.